Hey everyone, this is Saptarshi here and I welcome you back to our course on machine learning using Python. So we are in the clustering segment and we have looked at quite a few clustering algorithms. So we have started by looking at k-means. We have seen how the you know effect of means could be avoided with medians. In multiple dimension, we move to a concept called as medoid instead of median. We have looked at db scan, which is a density-based algorithm. And in our last class, we have looked at a hierarchical clustering algorithm named as agglomerative clustering. So one of the things uh, in a hierarchical clustering technique is that there is a relationship between the clusters, which is an ancillary product of the clustering algorithm. Okay, so we are using our familiar Kaggle environment. This notebook will be available as a public notebook so that you can do your experiments and run the code. Okay. So we are going to focus on seven questions. We are first going to look at the important parameters of agglomerative clustering. Then we will create a very simple data set and we will, we will see how to fit the clustering algorithm, how to visualize the same. We will look at different linkage options. So this is one of the parameter options. Then we will evaluate all of these variants based on the linkages on you know, classic uh, test data sets like moon, circle and blob. And finally, we will take a publicly available data set seeds, which is available from UCI uh, data repository and see how these different variants perform on there. Okay, so uh, the first question is, what are the important parameters? The first parameter is n clusters. How many clusters we want? By default, it is two. Second parameter, which is important is affinity. So when we find distance between two points or when we find distance between two clusters which distance metric we will use also we can use our custom distance metric but in that case instead of the data matrix as an input i will have to give the distance matrix as an input the distance matrix as you know is a square matrix and in that case i will mention affinity to be pre-computed now this linkage actually tells you how you calculate distance between two clusters when you are considering merger between two clusters okay finally you have a parameter called as distance threshold so instead of using n clusters you can use distance threshold so let's say you keep the distance threshold as five so if there are two clusters and you are considering that whether you will merge them or not if it is less than the distance threshold you will merge them if they are not you will keep them separately okay so these are the most important parameters. Now let's go to the second question. And before that, you know, so you you have two clusters, right? So the, the linkage options, you have two clusters. And how do you actually calculate distance with, between this cluster? So maybe you can pick the minimum distance between them. Okay, so that gives you mean distance or the single linkage or you can also take the maximum distance. So you can take the distance between this point and this point. So that will be called as complete linkage or maximum or complete distance. Okay. Then there is something called as an average distance. So average distance is like, you know, you find all the 16, uh, all the 16 distances. So from this point, you find distance with all other four points in the other cluster. Likewise, you go. So you calculate all the 16 distance and you take an average. And in what distance, this is a little bit more complicated, what you do is you find the total sum of squares, okay, uh, before the margin. And then you find that after margin, you, if you merge, uh, you know, two clusters or if you're merging, you know, uh, different options, right, whether you will merge C1, C2 or C2, C3, you will merge that clusters where your sum of square is minimally increased, right? your sum of square will be increased because initially when you are starting, all the points are in different clusters. So if your sum of square is zero, right? Uh, so anyway, when you merge them, it will go up. However, you will consider that option where this increase is minimal. Now let's see how to fit agglomerative clustering. So we start by importing agglomerative clustering from sklearn.clusters. We are using this NumPy uh, NumPy library, we are using matplotlib and then uh, we are using another library for visualization. So we are using the dendrogram, you remember? 
and then this color list we are using so that we can color different observations from different clusters with different color okay so different observations which will go into different clusters will be colored differently all right so let's run this code now what we are going to do is we are going to create a very simple data set okay so the data set has got only nine points okay and it is two dimensional so uh, we are going to call this as x uh, x array and then we are going to uh, use scatter plot so with this has got two columns only x0 and x1 so we are going to plot it so all these nine points that we created are shown in the scatter plot right all right now let's apply uh, this single linkage agglomerative clustering and let's look at the model levels okay so these are your model levels and you can see that you know there are nine levels that has got corresponding to each observation that are there in x and they are either assigned to cluster zero or they are assigned to cluster one let's proceed further okay now let's again do the scatter plot however now if they are from different clusters i will color them differently so if i run the scatter plot you know this point which was quite far away from all other points is in one cluster and the other points are in another cluster okay so of course you will not be not be happy looking at this kind of cluster okay now let's visualize this let's visualize this and for visualizing uh, we are using another linkage method which is the word distance and uh, we are calling this method called called dendrogram and then we are plotting the dendrogram okay so this is how your uh, dendrogram looks like which actually tells you that the 0th point and the first point are quite near to each other so is 5th and 7th and slowly you know uh, they goes up all right and, and and this color basically tells you that uh, you know uh, if you if you use a certain distance uh, you know certain distance measure how they will be in different clusters okay all right now let's go to our next question which is how different linkage will produce different results so you saw the single linkage really didn't give a good performance so what we are going to do in this function is this actually takes three parameters uh, x noise and c so we are not using noise over here however x is your input matrix and c is number of clusters you want so what we have done is we have actually fitted actually fitted our model with all the four linkage options here okay and what we have done is we have also plotted them uh, plotted them using the cluster levels okay so this is our function called as cluster plot now let's run this on the data that we created okay and let's see if there is some change so let's see all right now if you see you know your minimum distance maximum distance average distance all performs badly however your word distance is not so much affected by this outlying observation and it could find better clusters okay but till now we cannot really declare what distance to be a winner so let's look at some of the classic data sets so one of them is make moves okay so this is a very famous data set uh, for creating this data set you have a good function called as make moves which you need to import from sklearn.data sets these parameters you have to specify how many samples you are going to create and basically if you use some noise there will be some jitter in the points okay so you know and then let's plot it and see how this looks like okay so you know this is how it looks like uh, if you look at them visually you are very sure there are two clusters so what now we are going to look at is does my algorithms does these four options can identify them correctly let's run this okay let's run this and let's see how the result is okay so uh, if you look at the results you know 
uh, you will see that only mean has performed well. However, max, average, and word has really, really performed very badly. Okay, so they could not perform well. And why this is happening is that you know this has a particular property. All these points are somewhat at a distance from the other cluster. Okay, all right. So this is your moons data set. Now let's pick up another classic data set called as circles. Okay. So this is also available as a function from mixed circle and you use your usual parameters like how many samples and what is the noise and then we are doing a scatter plot and looking at how the data will look like and you see that this is a concentric circle. So you know the clustering algorithms actually try to find equal sized or regular shaped clusters. Okay. So this is also, so also a very good test bed to test your clustering algorithm. So let's run this, okay, and see how this looks like. Okay, so, uh, you know, this is how it looks like. Again, you will see that minimum distance is performing well, okay. Max average and word doesn't perform well and your judgment towards mean or you know your your tendency towards mean can be a little bit skewed however you know we will test on more data sets so the next data set that we are going to test on is the blob data set so blob data set basically creates you know gaussian distribution gaussian distributions which are well separated from each other so this actually you know creates by default three clusters and these are you know standard deviations that we are going to use on them so now if i run this over here you know so this is how the clusters looks like so this is quite well separated and these two are quite nearby okay so now let's run all these linkage options and see how our clustering performs okay so now if you look at the plot you see that mean has really performed not so well. Even max has not performed well. However, your average also has not performed well, but what distance has shown its robustness, right? So now probably you understand why by default you use the what distance. You can change this random state and you can get a different type of cluster and you can verify that yes so if you see now uh, these these gives completely different shape of clusters right and if i now run this run over this let's see how this performs so now if you see mean again has not performed well max average and word has performed quite well okay uh, so what still looks to be a quite robust method. Now let's use a standard data set from, from UCI repository. Okay. And let's use a parameter called as purity. So if you remember purity is one cluster valuation measure. So higher the purity value varies between zero to one, higher the value, higher are the results. When I say it is an external validity measure, that means my class levels are available. However, I will not use the class levels to perform the clustering. So let's create this purity function. And now let's read our seeds data. Okay. And these are the different columns that we have got. So we can also look at quickly the shape of the data. Yeah, so this is the shape. So it has got 210 rows and eight columns. And uh, we can look at some top rows. Okay, so if we look at the top five rows, so you know these sevens are your independent variables and this is your dependent variable. Of course, when we are clustering, we are not going to use this class information. However, we, are, we will use this class information to compute purity. So we segregate out X and Y. These are your independent variable and Y is your dependent variable. Now what we do is 
we actually fit all this you know single cluster complete cluster average cluster and uh, what uh, distance linkage with n cluster equal to 3 because we know that there are three classes okay and then what we are doing is we are checking the purity score we are using the true level and the cluster levels okay so let's run this okay and what we see is that uh, you know here also the word distance and the average distance gives you the best result so please understand you know what distance and average distance has are more robust okay but they also takes needs much more time than single distance or complete distance okay and if uh, if they maintain quite a quite a significant distance between e each other minimum distance the mean distance also can be quite quite useful in some cases okay so that was pretty much what we intended to cover thank you so much for watching the link will be provided in the video lecture please feel free to give your comments and if you have liked it hit the like button and subscribe the channel thank you so much for watching guys